Welcome back, and today we are going to be playing out the 109G6. Now, if you are wondering, yes, this is the Swedish premium version. It's 4.7, and it's the exact same one as you find in the German tech tree. So if you are wondering if you can use these two videos interchangeably, the answer is yes. The main difference here is going to be the matchmaker. You do fight Germany quite often, and therefore the planes you fight are a little bit different. But I also made a video on the German one. It's a little bit of an older video, but everything I say there still applies right here because the flight model has not changed and at 4.7 this is one of the best 109s to fly if you want the later tier 109 experience it's very closely matched to planes like the g14 and the g10 but it's a much lower battle rating and therefore much more forgiving to fly this thing feels fantastic and for today i am not going to be running the gun pods because the performance here is more than enough you can run the gun pods they will hinder your performance a little bit it's not too bad it's not like they absolutely kill the vehicle but with this one i actually prefer running it without one because the performance is good enough to the point where i don't feel like i need more firepower in the same sense that i do that with the 109 f4 of course, the 109 F4 has 15mm and this one has 20mm. Or you can swap them out for the MK108, the 30mm grenade launchers that have the velocity of a tennis ball cannon. They are extremely slow and that's the main reason why I decide to use the 20mm. You have more ammo, the damage while a little bit lower is more than offset by the fact that you will hit more rounds because of the velocity, the rate of fire... As well as just the sheer amount of ammo. Because here you have 200 rounds. With the MK108 you only have 65. Now if you are going for montages. Or you're trying to just dogfight people. And get those point blank one shots. Then yes the MK108s are going to treat you a little bit better. And the 108 is also a little bit lighter I believe. The difference here is absolutely minimal. But if you try to get cool clips. Yeah the 108 is probably going to be a little bit better. But just like with friends, I don't get any of those. So, you know, I'm just going to go for efficiency. Because the 20 mil is just much more my cup of tea. The 109, our main weakness here is going to be the high speed compression and the roll rate. The climb rate is pretty damn good if you get fully up tiered. Yak tree use, LF Mark 9s, you know, air spawn planes, they are all going to be above you. And they are also going to be more maneuverable. This is one of those planes where you really need to know your matchups and know what you can do. Because there's just a lot of those matchups where you can't really do anything if the enemy plays it right. But it's very important to know where your strengths lie. And with this plane, it is mainly the climb rate, the retention, mainly also because it turn, doesn't turn that tight. As well as the fact that it has incredible style control if you fly later tier 109 so that's the 109 f g and k you know that with the nose up you can basically trade stall shots all day long the stall control of this plane is absolutely fantastic it doesn't come into play all that often but if you are dogfighting a superior dogfighter like a yak tree like a spitfire and you really have to make something stick your best bet is probably going to be to set up in a way where you are able to get a counterattack with a stall shot. Now if you miss it, you are probably going to die because those planes just absolutely rinse you. But there's a very big likelihood that you get the shot in. And even if they try to dodge, if you are both slow enough, there's a very big likelihood that you will be actually able to just shoot him down. Now for the gameplay in the background, it of course depends on your match. In the down tiers, you are an absolute menace. Good speed, good climb, decent maneuverability, decent firepower. It does basically everything you needed to do well other than top speed. In an up tier, it is a little bit rough. Here we are going to dogfight a 109 and it's another 109G and I see this at closer range. So I'm not sure at this point yet. I see it. It's a G. We go up over his nose. It's a G2 drop. Now the G2 drop is a little bit more maneuverable. But we should be able to win in the prolonged fight here because of our energy the engine as well as the fact that we have a little bit less fuel so i try to go under his nose here to just dodge the shot i'm not trying to go for counter attack here i just need to prolong it a little bit but now he ends up directly on my six i took a little bit of a bad opener so we are going to try to go down here make sure that he can't follow me down because we are low to the ground he's forced to break off and because of that he kind of opens up the loop and flies out directly in front of me now we are going pretty slow he is going very slow he's turning the other direction and at this point he is essentially dead. Because if he tries to run away I will catch him. And if he tries to fight me well you can see it on the screen right here. Now he didn't do a fantastic job because he went vertical going like 200 kilometers an hour. And essentially just gave me the kill on the silver platter. Because he's now just too slow to dodge. He's too slow and doesn't have the position to do anything really to dodge my guns. 
and we saw his wing off with some 13 millimeters then we see the last guy i mean he is smoking we have 20 seconds of fuel left but he's not really going to put up much of a fight so i kind of dive on his right to make sure that he can't really head on us he's not really able to do anything he is not doing very well so we just kind of disassemble his plane and send them back to the hangar as well. That's going to be kill number 7. And then let's take a look at the slightly more interesting game. Where I can actually talk about everything. Instead of yapping about the generalization of this thing. Now we have another one on 9 on the 6. And I'm not entirely sure which one this is. But I don't want to have him directly on my ass. And we are somewhat alone. Yes it's night spotting. But I'm just going to bet on the fact that I can fight him right now. Because my team is already kind of dying in the background. So I want to wrap this up. As quick as I can. Now the 109 above us is actually maintaining his energy. I'm going to dive out to have a little bit of speed here. So I can actually dodge his guns. Because I'm in a worse position. And it's a G14. Now these two planes are slightly different. But it all is going to come down to pilot skill. And he has a lot of position on us here. I throttle down a little bit. Make sure that I get behind him. And he plays it right. And he plays energy. The issue is that... If I try to go up here, yes I'm in gun range, but I'm going very slow, it's hard to aim here. And he is actually dodging when I'm shooting. So for now I'm just trying to push him away a little bit so I have more room to get my speed back up. So those bursts are, yes I'm trying to hit them of course, but I'm mostly trying to just extend the distance here. So I can have a little bit of room here to dive out, to pick up some speed and then reset the fight. Because there's a very big likelihood that when people fly in this particular manner... They are going to do the exact same thing again. When people play energy by flying in a straight line. You can bet your ass they will try it a second time. So that's what we are going to be setting up for. So right now I'm trying to sit below him. I'm just trying to kind of push him as slow as possible. I'm thinking can I pitch up from here? Yeah I can. But if I miss the shot I am completely dead. And you can tell this guy is not really reacting to what I'm doing. He's simply just playing by like a flowchart. And I'm going to use that to my advantage. So I'm going to wait for him to dive on us. And we are going to essentially do the exact same thing. Except this time we are already lined up with his plane. Because he is directly behind us. Now, of course I don't want him directly directly behind us. So we are going to turn in a little bit here. To offset the angle and make it harder for him to actually hit us. But I still want to have a bit of a similar angle. To the point where I'm actually able to immediately counter attack. Now here I'm trying to turn in. But I'm not trying to actually turn fully in. Because I want him to dive on us with a little bit of 6 position. Now this guy is a little bit petrified here. He's not really taking the fight. And I'm just trying to stay close to him. Mask my position by being closer to him. Him cutting us off so it looks like he's faster. And he doesn't take it. So I go a little bit more aggressive. I turn in front of him essentially. This time we don't cut the throttle nearly as aggressively. And look at that, just like clockwork, he flies perfectly straight and gives us the kill. Now here it's only crit, so we make sure that we absent him in the back of his head. Because I want to actually get that kill without it getting yoinked. And then we fly towards the middle of the map. And we are met with the entire Luftwaffe, because the enemy team is alive and my team is not. Now I can do two things, I can play it safe, work my way top to bottom. And wait for my enemies to regroup and basically turn it into a 1v8. Or I just kind of kill the numbers as I can. And make sure that I don't get absolutely jumped. 109s are not fantastic at carrying. At least not when the enemies are all grouped up and working together. Kill the first 190. He doesn't see me because of nighttime spotting. Second one sees me but it's a little bit too late. A little bit too little amount of energy. And it's a 190A8. Not exactly the best performing 190 if that's the correct way to put it. So I put them both out of their misery. And... Put my speed back into altitude. Now there's a 109 coming in. I kind of want to dogfight him. Just because it's the more fun thing to do. But then I also notice. Well there's a P47 on the left. And if I start dogfighting this 109. There's a likelihood that it takes a little bit too long. And we are going to be third party. So I'm just going to go head on. Wait for him to dodge. See what he does. And he dodges a little bit sloppily. So I should be able to pull in here very easily. Severe him. Set him on fire. He's out of the fight. And now we can put our undivided attention on the P47. But a Donye 270 shows up. And I know that this game is going to go long. So I want to kill this guy before he goes back. Camps the airfield or bombs the bombing bases. We take a few rounds. Set him on fire. But he's of course going to put it out. As bombers do these days. So we kind of just leave him to burn. 
even if he doesn't burn up, even if he puts it out, there we go. I'm not going to go for him because it will get me killed versus the P47. And then the main issue here shows up and that's the Yak Tree on the deck. And it's the French one. And if you are wondering how much that thing costs, you can ask Glitched in the comments. P47 is going to catch us in the long run, but we should be able to somewhat outclimb him. And at this point, I'm just kind of thinking about... Separating the Yak Tree and the P47. I don't really want to deal with the Yak Tree together with the P47. Yak Tree absolutely rinses me in terms of performance at this altitude. And the P47 is going to have a very easy time just absolutely spraying me down. But for now, I have the position on the Yak Tree. I have a lot more altitude. And it looks like he's going back to the airfield. So I'm going to turn in right now and take this fight. Now, P47 isn't too scary. But it's the Italian one, which means it's the D30, which is probably the best performing P47. And it will catch you off guard if you underestimate it. So we merge with him. We are a little bit lower. We are in a good position here. But he actually banks his speed a little bit more than I expected. He goes up a little bit later as well. So my aggressive line here is actually countered by his passive one. And I'm not able to kill him in the very first turn. But again, stall control is fantastic in this thing. So we just kind of put the nose up and then we flop on over. And just don't have enough ball. Incredible. But we are now directly planted on the 6. And we should be able to reel him in here. Especially if he keeps turning. Now the issue comes from the fact that he can simply dive out. Just kind of can troll around. And I will never be able to kill him. Especially with the 120 mil in the nose. Now if I get lucky or if I have very good aim. I of course can. But if he does this. It's extremely annoying to kill him. And if he wastes my time enough. I will not be able to actually be alive for the third party so i actually break off and i kind of fake him into coming back up for me but he actually notices it and he breaks back off but because i banked my speed a little bit there and i went up again and kept him diving he wasted some of his top speed he is forced defensive and now we are on the deck he can't really dive out anymore and i'm in a very good position to just disassemble his plane so we we kill him we go back to land and we actually equip the gun pods because there's like three bombers left as well as one yak tree and here i don't have the performance and i don't have the guns for the bomber so i rather just have more cannons so i can actually kill whatever i am looking at donya 217 is gonna go for the bombing point i want to make sure that he doesn't make it as well as the fact that i want to make sure that he is not going to extend the match by flying back to the runway. Of course he hits 130mm on my nose cone. And it gives me an oil leak. And there comes the Yak Tree. He definitely knows that I'm here. Donye 217 is also somewhat flying at us. And I am not feeling this fight. Especially with an oil leak. I can't go back to base either. Because the timer is about to run out. As you can tell it's about uh, 19 minutes in. And... It's not going to be enough. So I climb towards the Yak Tree. I don't want to go too slow. So I actually have a little bit of ability here to dogfight him. We close up the radiators for the most part. Because the oil is already leaking anyway. So that's not going to do me much good anymore. Regardless. Rather have a little bit out of performance. And he does the unthinkable. He dodges the head on. Now we almost got the shot here. But I completely overlead. I just whiff it. And now we are merged with the Yak Tree. That is very hard to kill. Now we do something a little bit sussy here. But I feel like I'm on the clock. And we actually turn back into him. Now we will be able to almost get the shot here. We dodge last second. He just has his nose a little bit too low. And then we go up and over. Now this is not sustainable. But as I said earlier. You want to use the star control when you are out of position. Against an outmatched plane. So we pitch on over. And we should be able to actually get the shot here. And he does the one thing that I can't do. And that is hit him from 900 meters. He does the right thing. He dives out. He tries to get separation. He tries to get speed. And this is dangerous for me. Because if I try to take this shot. There's a likelihood that I miss it. Just like right here. Absolutely whiffing. And now I'm again locked in with the dogfight. I actually cut throttle. Something that I don't recommend you to do. But I feel like I need to get the position right here. Go all in for the shot. And I don't make it. We drop the flaps. We try to sit behind him. Because we are behind him right now. And then he goes for the counterattack. We roll out of the way very narrowly. That is very sus. And I probably should have died there. But we reverse the counterattack. And we are now directly on his 6. And this time we are slow enough to the point that I am not going to be missing. And we get a hit in. Now he's not dead yet. I'm trying to get the shot. And he luckily reverses his turn while going up. Loses all of his speed. And we put him in out of his misery. The Donye 217 however now got through to us. And he is going for the bombing point. And this is unfortunately not the last guy. So 
we merge with him. Well, not really merge, but we engage him. We shoot some rounds at him. We get a critical. And at this point, I just want to get the 8 kill. So we are going to turn after him. Because if I don't kill him right here, the game is over anyway. There's no reason for me to do anything other than kill them as quickly as possible. Because I don't have the time to go back to the runway. Rearm, repair, and then kill the last dude. We set through like four fires on this guy. Gunner is unconscious. And we are just going to try to glide back to the runway. In the hope that that other guy took off. And he's flying towards us. Because that's the only thing we can do right here. So he's on fire. He's going to be in the ground any second now. I'm going to wait for him to die so I can pop a blind hunt. And it actually goes on the other dude. There we go. And we pop it. And the issue is that... Uh... Yeah, there he is. A little bit unfortunate. And I feel like if the guy that I set on fire didn't put the fire out... I would have actually been on time in killing this guy. But alas, we are not. Donya217 wins it from across the map. A little bit unfortunate. But you know, not his fault that he just tries to play the game. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Everyone that came from Osbars' channel. Thank you very much for making it this far into the video. And make sure to stick around because we upload pretty frequently. Thank you for watching. And you'll see me in the next one. <laughs>